okay today what we will do we are going to start one of the another module one second so AOP so this is also one of the important model AOP means accept oriented programming okay so, so far what we are doing we are creating objects and we are invoking the methods correct and we are doing the validations so by using I will see what we are doing. We are creating an object, correct? Yeah. And by using MVC, so we are invoking some of the methods, APIs, services, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. <clears throat> so I mean, the, so far we are doing that kind of things. Now by using the AOP, what we are going to do? So let's suppose, say for instance, there is a method is there. So before your main aim is, you need to call this method. Correct. Mm -hmm. You want to call this method, mm -hmm. method one. Okay. So before calling the method, before calling the method, you want to mm -hmm. perform one task T one. Okay. Then you will call okay. M one. This is a task two. Mm -hmm. Once the M one execution is done, you want to call, you want to do something, some other task M two, sorry, T two. Okay. Mm. okay. Let's suppose, say for instance, while you are executing M1, some exception came. Mm -hmm. You want to track that one. Okay. This is basically right to date, I meaning in our software lifecycle, we, we are calling all the methods finally, right? Mm -hmm. so before calling the method, if you want to track something, kind of event, logs. Mm -hmm. So before calling the method, what is the value? Okay, then you will call the original business method. Once that is, once that is, when, when the M1 execution done successfully, then if you want to track something so that you can say T2, mm -hmm. when M1 is executing, if something happened, some exception came, you, even that also we need to track it, right? Yeah. So these kind of scenarios we can able to track by using this model. Okay. So these are the main purpose and uh, Basically, it's required to track the exception handling, events, logs, kind of thing. Let's suppose okay. you are trying to do some fund transfer. So before doing fund transfer, if you want to log from which machine the request came, IP number, if you want to log. If someone okay. is trying to hack, right? it's better if you can track the IP number from which machine they are trying to do these transactions, operations, so that you can log before method M1. Okay, then you uh, okay. even basically then you can do the fund transfer. So once that is done successfully, you can log T two. So what okay. are the information you need? You can inside the T two method. You can connect to the database. You can log whatever you want. Okay. Say for instance, when when you are doing fund transfer, uh, amount got debited when you are trying to credit something happened. You are not able to track it. But still, you had the, some exception okay. came, some time out or something. So, but still, we had to track that one also. Correct? Yes. Because we need to display in the end user account, I mean, the transaction history. Yes, yes. So, this is kind of audit purpose. After some days, if they came and if they will ask what happened, why my transaction not happened, you need to tell the reason. In the same way, after one month, if they come, they will ask, right, why this dispute transaction I can can see in my account. Then you have to tell this is IP number. It got, uh, when I did the transaction, you can go and check. Something like that. It's okay. Kind of okay, okay. So this is the main purpose of AOP. So this is also, I mean, here also we have a, like, a, I mean, the context XML and beans. Along with that beans, mm -hmm. we are setting some value. Also, we are going to add some methods. Okay. Methods plus we are creating some beans and we are, uh, we are I mean, assigning the value by using the setter and getter. Okay. So these are the I mean, uh, known operations. Along with that, we are going to add these methods. Okay, first okay. and another important uh, some definition is right advice. So there is a term called advice here as part of this accept oriented program. So there is a term will come like a definition kind of thing. 
So advice. So what okay. is the advice? You know. So when you are uh, <coughs> executing the your method, when you are executing your business method, so you want to execute some piece of code, correct? T one, T two, T three. So this one we used to call it as advice. This okay. code we used to call it as advice. So this is also one of the important definition as part of interview. The last okay. what is uh, what is advice? You can say where is your advice? So this is your business method, correct? You will execute this business mm -hmm. method, and uh, when you will perform the you will give back, you will give back the results. But this piece of code we used to call it as advice. Okay. So this piece of code can be before executing the method, after executing the method, or when read through the exception, different different scenarios. Okay. It is up to you. If you want to add only before executing method, you can add. If you don't want to do this thing, you can skip it. Got it. So this piece of code we used to call it as advice. Okay. This T one, T two, and T T okay. advice. So this is one of the important definition. Okay, let me have a look. I mean, I mean, one of the examples so that you will get some more idea. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> along with that spring EOP, today I'm going to tell another new topic. So this is also one of the important one. It's kind of Maven. Maven, oh, okay, yes, okay. Maven. So what is the purpose of this Maven, you know? So far what we are doing, so every time we are creating Java projects and we are adding class path, correct? We are including mm -hmm. the libraries, correct? Yes. And we are creating web project and we are copying all the jars into the lib folder, correct? Yes, yes. So this is what we are doing. So we can able okay. to avoid this task every time copy paste and uh, I mean downloading the jars and copy paste and all right. So we can able to avoid yeah. this task by using the Maven. So okay. anywhere whether you are using Maven or Java, but ultimately we need jars. We need support files, correct? Yes, yes. But here if you use maven right what maven will give you an advantage it will download the jars and it will give it for you you no need to care about from where we need to download and all so maven will download and it will keep somewhere in your system location and it will refer automatically so maven will take care of all the uh, supporting libraries so how maven knows what so are the yeah maven is a framework or is it like a tool it's or a something? tool it's a tool it's a tool Okay. So Maven will download. So Maven in uh, Eclipse. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. You can, you can. I will create and I'll show you okay. the project. So as part okay. of this example, I will use Maven only so that you will get some more idea. Okay. Okay. So f in case of well, I mean AWP project, I will not download any projects. What I will do, I will use Maven and it will download the libraries for me. So okay. how Maven knows what are the libraries we need to download. There is n number of libraries, right? So what are mm -hmm. the libraries we need to download? That we need to specify in one of the XML called form.xml. So what okay. are the libraries you need? You need to specify here. You need to specify okay. the name. For each library, this Maven people give a specific name. So if you want to spring, okay, you have to add this text. I will show you that a sample one so that you will, it's that we used to call it as the dependencies. So when you are okay. writing spring project, what are the dependencies? We need to download all the jars, correct? So that is a dependency. Yeah. So if you want to, so that dependency we need to include in one of the XML. I will show you that one now, what, how this XML will come on. Just introduction only. So basically, right, I want to create a simple Java project and I want to add some of the spring libraries, correct? 
Okay. So that mm-hmm. to download the Spring library, see there is a dependency. Org dot Spring framework Spring and version. Okay. So in Spring only we have so many versions, correct? Yes. So which version of library you want to download? Version you have okay. to mention here. This one artifact ID group ID. So what is this artifact ID group ID, right? Mm-hmm. So what this Maven people will do? So they they will download all the jars from the uh, corresponding websites, Spring framework. So we need to log into the Spring. Spring. I mean, we need to download the libraries from the Spring URL, Spring framework URL. Mm-hmm. And they will copy that URL into the their their server. Mm-hmm. So you can download indirectly from Maven server. Mm. So for each um, specific location or specific libraries, they will give a name. It's like okay. if say where you are staying, I can say right, I'm staying in Bangalore in India. Correct. Mm-hmm. It's address. Yes. So this is an address of Spring libraries, and this is a version. Okay. This is one dependency. Okay. So if you add this one, what will happen? You know, it will download the these libraries from the Maven repository. Okay, got it. So you no need to download. Just you have to mention this one. So mm-hmm. how you will get this name? Next question. Okay. So if, okay. You, if you want to get this one, right? So what you have to do is simply. Hello. Okay. See here, you will see here Maven dependency, Maven repository. Mm-hmm. So if you click this one, right? Okay. So you will get for for all the frameworks, not only Spring, MVN repository. So they are maintaining oh. their own repository. So what libraries you want to import? You want to import JUnits. You want to Spring Hibernate for everything. You will get dependency with all possible release versions. So all we need to do is type in that uh, name of the uh, correct correct. Uh, yeah, just open this one mavenrepository dot com and type here what you want. Okay. And you will get with. For for every version, they they for for every framework for each version they will maintain its own uh, repository. If you want to download this one, just click here. See, I got dependency correct. Mm-hmm. So copy this one, this dependency, and add into this XML. Nice. Okay. So you don't need everything to everything they have like. For every okay. framework, if you want to download for for Hibernate, previously for Hibernate, I I used to download and I used to give the names, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't want to do that one, come here. So it will give all the with for uh, different different versions. So you can just click here, and it will give all the versions. What version you want to download? Say for instance, one of the old version, take it 3.1. There is some problem. So if we if we put a, if we add a new version, I mean mm-hmm. old version will be automatically included, right? Like it will be backward compatible, right? If yes, yes. Whenever if you are if you are trying to add new version, it will not impact your old code or old versions. Yes. Yeah. You can add all. So, like, uh, if we don't know what version uh, we need, we can just always put the new version, and uh, uh, you know, no, no. Even if it's it needs an older version, uh, if you put a new version, uh, older version will already be included in the new version, right? Yes, so definitely. Yes, definitely. If in older version, if they are trying to remove some of the methods in new version, then you will see the underscore deprecated. Okay. Because that is the purpose, right? To release a new version means mm-hmm. you are trying to give some best feature, correct? Yes. Okay. So then they will do that uh, deprecation. It's kind of underlying. That you okay. will see. So in this way, you can able to download all the dependents for any framework. 
So basically, you have to keep this URL with you. I'll ping you so that if you need, you can you can have a look. Okay. This dependencies, all the dependencies are available in mavenrepository.com. There you have a search yeah. option. You can enter whatever framework you want and you will get all the dependencies with for every version. It will show you okay. the size also. So on 6.1 MB, if you download manually, I mean the size is 6.1 MB. Okay. 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 And now go back to the previous one and rest of the things are same here also we need to create all java files and uh, yeah. we need to create xmls everything is same there is no difference okay, okay only the yes yes that the advantage here right i mean um, you can able to see that it will create a jar also for you Okay, okay. Automatically, automatically it will create jar. So for every time when you are doing the change, right, it will create a jar. It's a simple Java project, right? So it will create a jar. Mm. If it is a web project, it will create a war. That okay. will be taken care manually. Okay, forget about that jar. Even if you don't have jar also, you can able to run. Why? Because we have a main class. Okay. So first, I will show you the XML. So what I did, you know, <clears throat> so basically here, right, I created a simple class called customer service. Okay. So inside that, you will see two fields, <coughs> name and URL. Okay. okay, name and URL. For these two fields, I want to set some values name okay. and url i am doing set name set url correct yes first i want to set the value after that there is a two methods if you see here right print name and print mm -hmm. url hmm. <coughs> and there is another method also is there print throw exception if you call this method mm. it will it will display some customer name if you call this method so basically this you can consider as a business logic mm. here we are not writing some hundreds of lines inside this method just for our understanding purpose i mean we are writing one simple method customer name customer website something like that okay and after that what i am okay. trying to do here i am throwing an exception if you call this method it will throw an exception Okay. Basically, three methods. It will two methods will print something, and another method will throw some exception. So what I want okay. to do? So whenever you, I mean I'm calling this method, I want to track something. So what is the arguments of this method? Before executing this method, I want to do something. Once this execution is done successfully, and I want to do something else. So before executing, after executing. If something okay. exception came, I want to track this one. Got it. So this is a my basic service. You can say you can consider this is one of your service, and this is some of your operations. No. So your basic service is ready, correct? Yes. So to call this service, we need to create an object, correct? We need to create an yes, object, sir. and from that we need to call print name, print URL, print throw exception. We need to call, correct? Yes, yes. So if you are doing like a simple core Java, you know how to create a object customer service CS equal to new customer service. But we are not going to create like that. Why? Because we are using a Spring framework. Mm -hmm. So what I will do here, I will use IOC model inversion of control and I will try to create an object for this one and I will assign values for these two fields. Okay. So how to do that one? <clears throat> for that, what I had to do, I have to create a bean, correct? Bean, ID, mm -hmm. and name. <coughs> okay. Okay, and what is the properties here? <coughs> name and URL. Mm -hmm. So these are the two fields, name and URL, and I'm trying to assign the value. Okay. So this is basically IOC model, inversion of control. We are creating an object, and we are assigning the values. by. E there is a different approaches, setter, getter, constructor, correct? So yes, here yes. I am trying to assign the values by using the setter getter approach. Got it. So this is basically IOC. Okay. Okay. Now 
<coughs> the another point i told you right what i want to do <coughs> before executing your service what i want to execute okay once the service execution is done what i want to execute that one we used to call it as advice so there is different types okay. of advice so that we will see the next one okay okay this xml we will come back again and we'll have a look this is a simple main class to call we are getting the customer object and we are trying to call the services print name print url and all okay and the print throw exception okay. so this is a main class basically that we have that we will see later and the customer service this one we already saw right print name service url all the operations is there mm -hmm. customer service main application just uh, minimize it now i told you right there is different types of advices so these are the okay so when you are if you want to use one of the ad existing advices right what you have to you have to create a class we have to create a class let me show you one of the methods so this is my class hijack after method so what it will do you know what is the purpose of this class right so if you want to perform some operation once the method execution is done after the method so write your own class some xyz and we have to implement this one after returning advice so this is one of the interface okay. it is available inside inside spring framework inside spring means aop specific module okay so you need to implement this interface and inside this interface there is only one method is there after returning okay so so as part of this method you will see everything so once your once your method is executing it may return something it may not return something correct if void yes, means yes. it will not return anything if it is not void means it will return something correct yes so if you want to capture what is what is what value it is returning we have an argument so what is the method name when what is the arguments it's a list right it, it can be one or more correct yes yes so these are the all possible arguments is that if you want to check something once the method execution is done if you want to check something you will get all possible values and what you want to do with that you can write your business logic for time being just we had gotten one simple sop okay just simple sop so that we can ensure this method got executed after business method okay so okay. that's what I, I had given one simple sop okay so this is after okay. method execution <clears throat> so there is another advice called before method this is also similar way the interface is different here method before advice okay so you have to implement this one and the arguments are same and we have to see here there is one difference before advice so before advice means before executing the method you will not get any value correct mm -hmm. value. here you will not see the return value okay. because method is not executed right so you, you don't have any value yes so that's what you will not see here return value but whereas in okay. previous example you will see object return value mm -hmm. So here you, you don't have that arguments itself. Okay. Perfect. And now the second, I mean the third one is hijack throw exception. When you are executing your business method, if some exception came, mm -hmm. when you are executing in between some exception came, then if you want to track that one, you need to use this one throw advice. Okay. So in case of throw advice, you will not get anything. You don't have any return value, right? If it's failed, what you will get? Yes. You will not get it. So you will not see any arguments. So basically here, mm -hmm. you you will get what, what kind of exception? Why it got failed? That you, okay. will get it. you want, you can able to track it. Right. Okay. Okay. And this is the interface and we need to implement it. Okay. Now. Mm -hmm. Now before execution, after execution, exception. Now the second, the last one is Isaac around the method. So what it will do if when the method is executing, mm -hmm. if you see here, method 
interceptor this is an interface you have to implement it so what it will do it will invoke the method basically so what method you want to call so that will call okay. here so you want to call okay. print name method right so that will be called inside mm -hmm. here so basically we are hijacking the original method invocation we are hijacking the mm -hmm. original method invocation and we are performing the sum of the operation along with the main operation and also we are executing the main service implementation Okay. Basically, your main service is not executing <coughs> in a original sequence. It is executing in a different sequence. So that is the main difference here. Okay. Basically, got it, got it. so your 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 main aim is you want to print some results. So that before printing the some results, I want to do something, and after that, so I want to. We are hijacking it, and we are performing in a different way. Got it. So okay. that. So how we want to perform? What is the different way? So that we have to implement this interface method interceptor. So here we okay. have only invoke is there. So you, here you will get all the information like method. What method you want to call? What is the arguments? Everything we can able to get it here. Got it. Okay. Now what we will do? So basically, ultimately, we are going to call your method, original method. So how we are calling your original method? We are calling in a different way. Proceed. So when you are doing proceed, means it will execute the your your own method. So what method mm. you want to call? So this is your original method invocation. So if you see here, you will not see your method name, print name, something you will mm. not see here. Yes. So indirect, indirect, we are calling your original method in a different way. And before calling the original method, what you want to do so that you can configure here before hijacking. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> Once the execution is done, what you want to do, you can configure here. If something happened, then definitely it will come to the exception block. So it, it. it will be executed here. But how we are calling this method? Ultimately, we need to call invoke method. So how we are calling it? That is the that we are going to configure here. So so far we saw okay. this one correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, basically here it's in interceptor. So what it, it interceptor will do? It will execute the business method in a different way. It okay. is spring have its own style. So it will execute this the main business operation in a different way. So for that, what we have to do? So we need to configure all the bins here. Okay. So this is the method interceptor correct this is the main one which will execute the method so this one we need to configure in your xml interceptor mm. so this okay. is your class and you, you are given some name hijack something okay you mm. can give any name and this is your own interceptor class which will execute the business operation in a different style Okay, mm -hmm. this one you declared it. After that, you will see here there is another bin is there. So, what is the purpose of this bin? So, Spring have its own bin, Spring proxy bin. So, why? Because here okay. we are hiding the main business method and we are executing that one in a different way. So, basically, it will try to create a proxy. Why? Because okay. we are using some proceed method. But proceed method is not there if you see in your customer service. There is no proceed at all. Okay. So basically what it will do, it will create a proxy of original service. And you set the proxy, it will hide all these methods. So based on the customer input from the proxy, we are invoking the original method. Okay. So this one we used to call it as a proxy. It's a spring framework. So mm. inside the for proxy, to create proxy, we need to give some input, right? For what service we are, you are going to create a proxy. Mm -hmm. So this yes. is my, I want to create customer service for I want to create proxy for customer service. Mm -hmm. What is the target of your proxy? So this is the target, and target is customer service reference. Okay. So this is your original service. This original sir, your original service will be invoked through proxy Spring proxy. Got it. This is clear, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, now <clears throat> the second question. Now your proxy, proxy is ready. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, when we are calling the methods, right? 
Mm-hmm. So we need to call in a sequence before method, after method, around method, something like that. So that methods also we have implemented, correct? So how the sequence should yes. be. So this is also one of the input for your proxy. Interceptor name. Service name Water. and corresponding, uh, what is it? <clears throat> that uh, indirectly we are implementing, right? So that also, this is called interceptor. Mm-hmm. So for your proxy, we need to give original service name and dummy dummy, uh, dummy service in implementation. Got it. So this one we used to call it as a, this one, whatever the name you have given here, you can give the same name. But the property is, we have to use same property. Per property, we have to give the different value. So these two are the properties, target, and interceptor for target you have to give your original service name okay okay and for interceptor how that should be executed in a different way got it so this is a simple example okay now go back to the this is clear right before after around throw yeah. mm-hmm. okay now go back to the uh, what else? This customer service, we had a look. This is also fine. And uh, this is my SRC. <clears throat> so I'll, okay. I'll show you how to create this Maven project. It looks like a little bit different. SRC, main, Java, com, something, right? And you will see the resource. Yeah. The resource, you will see the XMLs. Okay. And you will see some test folder also. I will tell you what is the purpose of this test folder also. Okay. okay. Now go back to the main class. Let me close all others. And long back you asked, right? If I want to add more XMLs, how to add it? Yeah. yeah. So this is the way you get to use the array. Array means spring array, string array, and you can include how many XMLs you have, like separated by. Mm. That also Come one on. of the examples. Yes, yes, comma, okay. and if you have any other examples, abc.xml. So that it will try to read all the XMLs when you are trying to execute this method. It will try to read all okay, the okay. class path XMLs, whatever you had given here, and it will keep into the memory. Got it. Just uh, the, uh, to cover that point, I added this one, so that you will get some idea. Okay. Got it. Okay, now, <clears throat> so we are using the, this, I think we know, I mean, we have already this application context uh, class path and we are trying to give your XML as an input and we are trying to get the application context object. From that, what we are trying to do? We are trying to get the customer service object. Okay. And this is a bean name. So whatever name you had given inside the XML also, your bean ID is same name. Okay. So basically we should not call your own method directly here. We are trying to call in a different way, correct? We have to use proxy. Instead yeah. of proxy, we are going to call our main service, correct? So that's yeah, what here we are getting a proxy. And if you call your proxy, what it will inside the proxy, it will call your main service. So okay. we're trying to get the proxy, proxy object. So inside the proxy indirectly we are referring? In the main service. service. Correct. Now, ultimately, you have a customer object. So from the customer object, what do you want to do? So let me comment out all these things. We will execute one by one so that. Uh... So now what I want to do, I will comment out this one also. Basically, I want to execute one of the method called print name. Okay. Just I want to execute print name method. What is available inside the customer service? Okay, let me execute it and you will see what you will get. So the method name is print name, correct? Yes. And method arguments, I think right now we don't have any arguments. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and what it will do, so before executing the method, so it started already. So far method is not executed. Just this information okay. we are trying to read. 
Okay. This is the information. If you want to know what is the method you are going to call, what is the arguments? If you want, you can ignore this. If you don't okay. want, you can comment out this one. The main ultimate goal is okay. before executing the method. Okay. Okay. And this is your method execution, basically. Customer name. Let me go and have a look. So what is there inside your customer service? Print name. So this is our customer service, correct? And go to the print mm -hmm. name. So what we are doing here? Customer name, colon, and some name we are printing, correct? Yeah. So this is your main method execution. Customer name, colon, some name. So now, before yeah. executing your main method, you can able to do something, correct? Before method in yes. checking. So here you can do whatever you want. Now this is your ma main method execution. Got so, and after once the your main method execution is done, this is after case. Okay. <sighs> okay. Mm -hmm. Now go back to the second method. Let me comment out this one also. Just let me enable only print URL. So these are some different service, correct? Print URL. So let me execute okay. it. So print URL, I'm trying to call a method and there is no arguments and before print URL hijack. And this is the customer website. So this is the main method. So let me go to okay. the print URL method. So if you see here print URL. So what is there here customer website and some something we are trying to display correct. Yes. Sir. So this is our main method. So we can able to hijack it. So we can able to add something before and we can able to add something later. Okay. Okay. Now this these two we can able to hijack. Now the third one, okay. last one. Okay, let me call that one. Let me comment out. So basically, right? Oh sorry, I should have comment out this one also. It is also executing every time. So let me execute again back one more time. So first I want to call only print name method. Okay, let me run it. If you see here, I am trying to call print name method and no arguments. Yes. yes. And before mm -hmm. method ex execution, and this is my method execution. Correct. And this is after method execution. Got it. Okay. Now let me comment out this one and run it. Other service print URL. So I'm trying to execute my print URL method and there is no inputs. Okay. That also you can able to read it. If you have any arguments, it will display the data type. Got it. <clears throat> so this is the print URL method I'm trying to display and no arguments and before method. Mm. And this is my original uh, service implementation. So customer mm. web website we are printing as part of print URL and this is after hijack. Okay. And there is a last method also is there which will throw the exception. These two will not okay. any exception, correct? Yes. The last ex method, if you call this method, right? So what it will, it will throw some exception. So basically that also we need to track, right? When we are throwing some exception, we have to track that exception. So how we are going to track that one? This is a different scenario, basically. Okay, let me comment out. <clears throat> so basically what I'm trying to do here, let me enable it. Just I had given a try catch. Why? Because it will throw some exception. So if you call, if you see this okay. method, right, it is having some throwable statement. Print throw exception. So I need to provide a try catch. Okay. Otherwise, I am not able to. It's a kind of checked exception. So I, for checked exception, okay. we have to provide try catch. So okay. ultimately, here I am calling one of my method customer dot print throw exception. Okay. okay, so what will happen if I call this method 
some exception will throw so that also i want to track it so how we are going to track it so let me run it see method name is print through exception and no arguments i am not passing any arguments correct yes <clears throat> see here before method hijacked okay mm -hmm. and when we are trying to execute the method what what happened here through exception around the exception when yes. we are executing the method it got failed and so you can able to track it yes. so method is not executed completely here correct before executing mm -hmm. and once the method execution started it got failed yes so that we can able to track it got it so if successfully execution happened then you can able to track after got it so you don't have results also here so only you have an exception message and uh, if you want to yes. track what is the input came to this methods and all you can able to track it here as part of this one why it failed this is the result so this is basically got for got a kind of audit purpose it's kind of bank application hmm. only yeah to just to check where yes, it went yes. wrong where it went wrong when it happened from which client invoke kind of thing okay and basically for exception handling also this this will be used to revert the transactions kind of thing okay okay now another this is clear right yes yes okay now i will tell you the maven a little bit more so okay. basically right how first if you see there is a difference you did you see the m symbol yes m symbol you will see and the java this is a java project and but plus it's a maven project these are the these are not maven projects simply java projects those are okay those are regular project regular right? project but this is a java project plus maven project okay maven compatibility is there that's what you will see m symbol so that you can able to identify whether it is a maven project or normal project okay Perfect. and how to create this maven project for your eclipse right by default you will get this feature so whenever you are trying to create a, how to create a maven project basically so just right click go to other just type maven sorry so if you see here you will get uh, three options maven project maven module check out maven project from scm if you have any existing model if you want to download it if you want to check out something so what you have to do just select here maven project okay and where you want to save the location got it so location if you want to edit it you can browse and you can change that location okay <clears throat> now print next so when you are creating any project right you want to create java project or web project correct so different modules correct yes yeah. so here also yeah. for for maven also there is a different project you want to create a core java maven project or web project okay so that is the main funda here so here you can select that So these are the types basically what project you want to create you want to create a java project this one we used to call it as a archetype so what kind of project you want to create you want to create a web project create it if you want to create a j2w mm -hmm. simple project you can create it so based on your requirement you can select it so you want to Got create it. Okay. then you can select the corresponding uh, whatever you want version then you can click next one second it is trying to load okay hey Something broken. Okay. 
click next okay. select the corresponding type of project you want to create java project or web project after that what you have to do you have to give here group id and artifact id so what is this group id and artifact id right so here we are going mm -hmm. to give two names one is what is your project name okay and another one is what is the package name you want to give so inside if you see here right we are giving under src com test something right yeah what is your basic package name plus what is your basic project name that we had the package give. name you saying the maven uh, package name or it's not inside src we are giving right like com dot test base package name basically oh. Okay, okay. We have to give some base package here, definitely. Okay. So that is the purpose. It is expecting artifact ID. So why why we Not need this artifact when we are trying to upload in? So all these jars we are uploading into some of the server, right? Yeah. So in that case, we need these jars. And what is but. the version? We are maintaining version also, right? Mm -hmm. So that by default it will start zero point zero zero one. Got. Snapshot means it is in development mode. If it is okay. development is completed, you will see like this. You can give anything; it's no problem. Version is up to you how you want to maintain the version. But by default, it will okay. give zero point zero one as a version. If you want, you can use it. If you don't want, you can write. You can start with a hundred point zero zero something like that. Okay. All are editable, so you can give whatever name you want. Okay. So this is the way we have to give the artifact ID. See, we, it will not allow duplicate names. So because everything we are uploading into the server, correct? So that's what yes. if you give same name, it will not allow. So we have to give something else. Okay. And this is your package. So if you want, you can give the package differently. That is up to you. Then finish it. Okay. There is a problem in my Eclipse, so that's what it is not able to create it. Basically, it's getting out of mode. Okay. After that, you will see project like this, and you will see SRC and target. So, what is SRC and what is the target? So, inside the target, right? So, every time whenever you are changing your class names, whenever you are building it, right? So, it will create a new jar. Mm -hmm. Every time it will create a new jar. Okay. If you want to give your project to somebody else, copy this jar. And you can give it to somebody else. If you want to deploy your application to the server, copy this jar and deploy it. And this is a version. Okay. If you want to release a new version, go to palm.xml, change it to two. And mm. after that, what you have to do? Just write. If you want to, we need to generate a new jar, right? Yeah. What you have to do? You modified something and you modified the version also. So now what you have to do? Just right click, right click, and see here run as correct. You see hmm. here a downside, Maven clean and install. So there is setup commands. What it will do? Maven clean. What it will do? The existing jar files it will remove from the target location. Okay. It will remove all the old files. Let me do it. I executed Maven clean, so it will remove all these old files, old jars. Okay. Let me execute it. Yes. Now this is a target folder. Did you see any jar here? Mm -mm. No. Now, now what you have to do? You want to create a new jar? Right click. Install. Maven install. We are going to create a new jar. Okay. <coughs> Hmm. 
so there is some problem so there is another way to execute this command basically there is a problem in my eclipse so how to execute it just go to this location of the project so this location of the project is com spring batch spring okay enter into this just open open command window Op go to this location and this is your src so you <coughs> go to the base script palm.xml location okay open command okay. window from here just command window i am trying to open from this location just remember this command maven clean install so what it will do okay. it will remove the existing files and it will create a new jar with the okay. whatever src content is available what are the java files currently it is available press enter so it will create a new fresh jar with a new version new with the new files so it is it will do everything it will compile all the files and it will create the jar and if you are keeping any j units right it will execute j units also okay did you see their build success correct yeah yeah compile it will compile all your java classes and it will create jar also it will execute your if you if you written any j units is good right Not when it. you are creating you are, when you are trying to give jar you can execute your j in so that you can ensure this jar is perfect correct yes so yes. it will execute j units also now go to the location Not and it. just yes. refresh it okay. just refresh it and you got a new version correct yes the version is 0.02 previously it was 0.1 okay so the generated jar will be there under target location and Not these that. are ignore okay these are the dark class files like previously we the dark class files are generating in bin folder correct yeah now the dark class files will be generated under target under target under classes so you can see here class package aop all your dark class files got it so when you are doing maven clean it will it will remove all the files and it will re regenerate everything hmm okay and inside test you can write your j units here these are the j units okay. basically you see here these are the j units have test case okay so this is a sample test case whatever it got generated a set true but if you can write here your own your test cases so when you, how when it will be executed this test folder whenever you are creating a jar by default this test will be executed so that you can ensure if something if some error if something wrong in your jar right in your code it will display mm -hmm. here one test run it will display failure count error skip so that you can ensure so there is something wrong in your code okay so this is the main advantage of uh, uh <coughs> maven mm. you can able to execute the j units it will create the jar it will clean and it will download the uh, supporting libraries or dependents from the maven repository everything it will do by itself yes 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 Hmm. let's suppose if you don't yeah. want to execute this uh, j units if you don't want to execute so there is a configuration hmm. inside your form.xml if you go back here you will see here skip test so here it is not there so let's suppose now when now you are executing maven clean install if you don't want to execute your tests dij units there is a command i f n d mm -hmm. skip tests equal to true basically i want to skip the j units okay now it will create a new jar but it will not execute the j units got it yeah <clears throat> so it is trying to uh, deleting the old files and it is trying to see here delete 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 
and tests are skipped. Did you see that? Yes. So that way, if you don't want to execute, if you don't want to waste your time, then you skip your test. Got it. Got it. Okay. So this is a basically it's a life cycle. It's you can able to customize like uh, software development life cycle. It will give you basically okay, okay. development life cycle. And whenever whenever you want to change the version, you can change it in Palm dot XML version. Okay. okay. And if you okay. want to create a var file, jar file, so you can mention here var. You want to create a jar, mention jar here. Uh, what is the difference? <clears throat> jar is for core Java projects. War is for servlets, okay. HTML, web, okay. project, web projects. The archives, right? Yes, yes. But this okay. is a simple core Java, right? So this is a Jar projects. If you are writing any MVC okay. projects, MVC, did you see that symbol? Hmm. Globe symbol. This is a web project. Okay. It's a core Java project. If you want to create Maven project for this one, you will get. You have to give here war. Okay. Got it. So this is the I mean uh, some basic about Maven and AOP. So you create a var and uh, uh, then you have to install that somewhere, right? Uh, yes, you need to install that jar into your Tomcat server. Okay. No, no I'm talking about when you have var, mm -hmm. like web application, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so where will you be using a uh, war file? Yes, let's suppose you created a war file if you want to give it to me. So you have to give that war file. Mm -hmm. I will take that war file and I will install my Tomcat. Okay, okay. If you want to give it to somebody else. Got it, got it. Okay. That way you can able to give or deploy it to somewhere. So basically it's the same similar to jar only, but uh, you're, you're using it for web application. Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. That is the main difference. Okay. Hmm.